we're making keto sourdough bread with almond flour. Let's go. That's right, a sourdough with a starter made with almond flour and it looks like this on the inside with beautiful separation. And this topping has got almond flour on it so you get a more rustic look. And the other one has a mix of oat fiber and sweetener. This one. Now a lot of you have already started preparing your starter but if you haven't already, do make your starter, it takes several days and if you want a link to that recipe click on this link now oh but mel i don't really want to make a starter if that is you we have a similar bread recipe that tastes and looks like sourdough bread but without the starter and this recipe is kind of similar to that and if you want the recipe to that click on this link now while this sourdough bread recipe is very similar to a regular sourdough bread in taste and looks there are quite a few differences obviously it's keto and we have no proofing time the nutritional information and your ingredients list with two sets of measurements is listed in the description box and let's get into the recipe now first you want to take your starter out of the fridge and bring it up to room temperature you can let it sit on your bench top if you have the time but i like to give it a good stir first and then i transfer it to a jar that's already room temperature and then i feed it with 50 grams of warm water one tablespoon of almond flour and one tablespoon of yeast And I like to do that with both jars because I like to use the most frothy part of the starter and we're gonna need 80 grams worth or one third a cup. You also want to heat up a cup of water about 70 degrees Fahrenheit and have your eggs at room temperature. Now let's begin by adding 80 grams of the starter to a bowl. It equates to about one third of a cup and you wanna get all the frothy part of the starter in and that's why I feed both jars. And then use the liquid part if you don't have enough froth. Next, add one cup of warm water, about 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius, one fourth cup of white vinegar and five large eggs. Your egg amount should weigh about 270 grams and if it's much less, you want to add another egg. Give it a good whisking so that you have bubbles on top of the mixture and then set it aside. Grab another bowl and to that add one cup of almond flour. These next ingredients is a must. Without them your bread will turn out more like a big biscuit okay. Add three tablespoons of flaxseed meal, three tablespoons of psyllium husk powder and one and a half cups of oat fiber. Then one tablespoon and one teaspoon of baking powder, a half teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, and one tablespoon of sweetener. So why add sweetener when we're making sourdough bread? The powders we have added are more bitter than regular flour, and the sweetener is there to balance it out. We want a sour taste, not a bitter taste, but also the sweetener is your choice and it's optional. It won't affect the recipe. Mix all of the dry ingredients together until you have one color, and then pour the wet ingredients into the dry. Mix it well and you will see the consistency change to a stiff but sticky dough. Oil your hands, remove the dough from the bowl and place it onto paper. And now shape it into a ball. You will see lots of cracks and what will remove it? Oil. Okay, sprinkle some oil on top of the ball and keep working the dough. You can see me press into the dough, pushing it underneath the ball and that's helping to smooth out the cracks. Let's talk about toppings. In this recipe, I mix together one tablespoon of oat fiber and one teaspoon of sweetener. And for me, this works best. You would think that arrowroot powder is a great option given it's so fine and white, but no, it disappears into the oily dough. And what about almond flour? This is great if you want a rustic looking loaf. We know that almond flour scorches or burns quickly in the oven, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to take care of that later. Once you have spread the flour or powder of your choice, it's time to create some designs. Now for a quick crash course, 
in sourdough scoring. If you have a basket, simply remove the material part of the basket, throw some powder into the basket and spread it around. I mean the same powder you applied to the dough. Add the ball of dough to the basket and lightly press it in. And look, when I remove the dough, it has simple but pretty lines on it. Another option is to use string. I'm keeping the string on because then you will get to see how much this dough rises in the oven and you can see at this point the string just about fits the ball with no tension. You can leave it as it is or you can do some scoring. You do need a lame or something sharp to do this and I have some sourdough tools in my Amazon store if you want to get some. Okay I'm just doing my own thing here and you can also use scissors to do something a little different. When you're ready, slide the paper with the bread onto a lined baking sheet. Cover loosely with foil and this is going to protect your bread from scorching before baking properly on the inside. And bake for about 55 minutes total. If you want a darker crust, bake it for 45 minutes, remove the foil and then bake it for another 10 and your crust will brown up beautifully. And ta-da! Just removing the string and when I flip it, check out the deep grooves the string created and how much the bread has swollen. To store your bread, you would wrap it in saran or cling wrap and store in the fridge for up to four days and it freezes really well, but do defrost it naturally. But wait, we forgot one thing and that is to cut into the bread. So I have my trusty knife here and let's do it. You can see that they're very similar. Lovely. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you get to try this recipe and do let me know what you think. Stay safe and be well.